Hi, Stash Cairo. Here we are at Stately Stash Manor in beautiful Chiyoda Ward, Tokyo. Today, I'm just going to complain. Just got off the phone with Lord Spade. He's crazy busy over at Displaced Media editing some video game thing that he's doing. Don't ask. I don't know. Ask him yourself. His new album's out, etc. And he was saying, so, you know, Stash, what's up? I just got back from the barber. Jesus Christ. Look, I know most of the audience isn't in Japan, even though we are. How many people watching right now are in Japan? How many white, black guys watching right now are in Japan? Anybody out there have problems with their barber? Look, I got a beard. Japanese hide. I swear to God, man. Finding a barber that can do a shave and trim a beard? It's ridiculous. I got this guy, this husband-wife team up the road. He's 90, she's about 85. Lovely people, don't get me wrong. Don't speak a word of uh, of English. But really nice. The problem is, on the rare occasions I let him cut my hair, and he's two minutes up the street from me. I swear to God, the poor guy's gonna drop dead. He has to sit down and have a cigarette <laughs> outside. I can't have him cut my hair anymore. His wife's a lovely person, and they do an okay job on the beard. But, no, I, I fear for their health. Now, just down the street that way by Conda Station is another barber that I've been going to. And these guys are garbage. First of all, their terrible attitude. Oh, look what the cat dragged in. It's that tall, fat guy, Jin, from up the street. Okay, I can forgive that. I can forgive that. But they, they, they can't trim a beard. Two people, the older guy and his employee, a woman, she doesn't do a bad job of the hair. But he's afraid to cut the white guy's hair. That would be me. So he trims the beard. I had to come home and re-trim it. He didn't, he didn't shave me properly. How tough is it for a barber to shave, to shave your neck? How tough is that? They don't cut a line in the, in the mustache. They don't trim away the, uh, the flavor saver. It's terrible. Years and years, I used to live in Nihonbashi, where I had a decent barber, like 10 years. And they could trim a beard. They could, they could do a haircut. They could chew gum and tap dance. They were idiots. I gotta find a new barber now. My buddy Lord Spade and Jules, they say, Stash, you gotta go to the black barber. Yeah, there's a black barber, Nigerian dude, in Rapongi. I don't remember his his salon. It's about two three minutes from Rapongi Station. They insist, man, this guy he can trim a beard. This guy can. Tap dance, chew gum, the whole bit. But I'm a lazy sack of you know what. Now I live not that far from Rapongi. I can I'm two minutes of the station. I can jump on the Ginza. I can be in Rapongi in about thirty minutes. That's the second part of my complaint. How many people, whether you're in Japan or you're anywhere right now, are just going stir crazy, cabin fever, whatever you want to call it? It, 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 it's insane. It, it's absolutely insane. Every single day is like the day before, is like the day that's going to come up. And if you're in Japan, if you're in Tokyo, you'll know that the weather is horrible. It has been gray and depressing and drizzly and raining for three weeks. Lord Spade and I are supposed to shoot a live reaction video with six songs, three of mine, three of his. We've worked out the logistics. We had some sound problems. We got it covered. We're going to shoot it outside in Yurakacho, which isn't that far from where I live. Can't do it. The rain. The rain is just too ridiculous. I'm sick. It's bad enough. It's bad enough. There's no work. It's bad enough. I'm confined to my apartment. It's bad enough that Everyone seems to be in slow motion mode, and now the weather is garbage. I checked my my phone for the weather forecast, because Lord Spade was saying, when's it supposed to be clear? And according to my phone, it's not going to be clear until August 13th. Now, long-term long -term weather predictions like that are ridiculous, but you, you, you look at the thing tomorrow, 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 it sounds like a play by Shakespeare. Every day is garbage, except when it's worse than garbage. So I'm going out of my mind. How many people watching right now across the world can't take it anymore? 
Yes, I know we're a small channel. I know we have a small audience. But the seven people who are watching, how many of you are going crazy? I'm going nuts. My younger brother called me two days ago from Toronto, well, outside Toronto, Muskoka, where he's luxuriating in his multi-million dollar mansion summer home. Yeah, my brother's got bucks. And he's just saying, well, you know, you know, Stash, things aren't bad. We've got the golf course. We've got 5,000 square feet. We've got the helicopter pad. We've got four hot tubs, 12 TVs, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. He's fine, man. He's fine. I'm a downtown urban kind of guy, and I'm going crazy. Now, the other day, I don't know, two weeks ago, on that live stream I did, that Lord Spade was evidently wanting me to talk about, I mentioned I've got this Oculus Quest VR helmet which I don't use for gaming. All I ever use it for is to watch movies and TV shows. And it's getting to the stage where my eyes are going all crossed. I'm actually watching so much TV, downloaded movies, TV, that this whole immersive VR thing, it's becoming solipsistic. It's becoming like my world. I don't know what to do. Is anybody out there watching some peak TV, as they call it. Did anybody watch that thing with Jennifer... What's her name? She was in... Her first film was Phenomena uh, with uh, Dario Argento. Jen, Jennifer Conley. Yeah. Did you see that Snowpiercer show? Lunatic premise. Whole thing was, was nuts. I love the show. I really love the show. It's ended. I looked forward to watching it. Now I have no life because Snowpiercer's gone. This is the train with the last of humanity going through the negative 100 degree snow on a trip around the world. The premise doesn't really make any sense. Why not just build a bunker somewhere? Why have this train on tracks that can be washed out by snowstorm? Doesn't make any sense, but a compelling drama. Last night, I watched this thing called Singapore Grip. It's a British TV show, I think it's BBC, about hijinks, who knows, I saw the first episode, hijinks in Singapore in 1940-41. And the irony, of course, is that the Japanese were attacking. Here I am in Tokyo watching this retro stuff. It was good. I watched this Australian TV show, Between Two Worlds. I lasted one episode. Yeah, Between Two Worlds or Banging My Head Against the Wall. I'm going to go for the latter. Forget Between Two Worlds. I'm also watching the number one show in France, as if you care. It's called Belvezan. It's about this somewhat depressed, hyper-energetic forensic pathologist who is a genius and wants to have crazy sex with the Capitan, whatever her name is, Helen, and the sexual interplay between them. I'm binge watching that. I'm on season two, episode five. En Francais, of course, with English uh, subtitles. What are you watching? Leave a comment. Suggest something to me. I was suggesting things to Lord Spade, but you know something? He's just not a TV guy. The irony is he works in TV. He cuts TV. He's got a production company. He cuts music. He puts stuff together, but he doesn't watch a whole lot of TV. What are you watching now? What language is it in? Jesus, you watch a lot of TV. That's my best Lord, Lord, Spade, Lord Spade impression. I don't know what to tell you. It's muggy. It's humid, which is the same thing. It's bleak, dark, and depressing. And everyone's having no fun except for my, my rich younger brother who's living large in Muskoka outside Tirana. Did I ever tell you that, by the way? I'm going to give you some insider information on how to say Toronto. If you're an English Canadian, you say Toronto. If you're an American, you say Toronto. If you're French Canadian, you say Toronto. Japanese people say Toronto. But if you're from Toronto, you say Toronto. Last year, I had to, actually about a year ago, uh, July, I had to fly back to Toronto to take care of some, some business. So I was there downtown, just where I used to live. You can check out my story, Royal York Hotel, drunk, one of the excerpts from the live cast we posted. 
the Youngman College area. But I took care of the business. I was at Pearson Airport ready to catch the flight to Haneda, which is lovely, 13 hours of pure bliss. And there's a, a burger joint in the Pearson Departures, International Departures, I guess Terminal 1, I don't know. But they have all these burgers. They've got the Los Angeles burger, the Chicago burger, the Toronto burger. There, there's nothing special about them. They're just names for the burger. So I think I got a Los Angeles burger. I'm standing there waiting. Da, 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 da. They took JCB, great news. And I hear to my right, I can't see this person. The cashier said in a, in a bit of a, uh, an accent, may I take your order, ma'am? And the lady says, yeah, I have a Toronto burger. <laughs> like, wow. I didn't even have to look at her. There was a woman from my hometown. I'm going to wrap this thing up. Hopefully tomorrow, we're going to try to do a live stream on these six songs. Hopefully. Hopefully the weather gets better. Hopefully this corona crisis ends and we can all have a life. Anyone have a TV show for me to watch, please suggest it. You got some thoughts on some songs you want us to react to? Suggest it. Oh, God. Hayakawa Bunko. Oh, they looked away. The publisher. That's another story. Folks, thanks for watching. Back soon with more, hopefully the live stream tomorrow, and some reaction with my colleague, Lord Spade.